Welcome back to Sussex Farm for episode 4 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, have I got an episode for you. I've said this before, but I really do mean it this time. Buckle in. There's some awesome news coming your way. I'm not going to do that stay till the end and I'll tell you the news kind of thing. It's coming in a minute. I'm too excited not to talk about it straight away. It's really, really cool. Um, I've got a couple of jobs to do. I'm going to be putting manure into the trailer that I bought down at the end of the last episode. Now I could have just loaded it straight into the trailer, but where's the fun in that? I want to do it kind of properly. Let's load it like you would load manure into a lorry. Uh, first job I'm going to do, I'm going to get over to a little farm over the other side of the airport. That's Mr. Selican who lives over there and the tree that's crashed into his roof. I'm going to go over there, fix that and remove it. I have a tale of deception, a tale of cunning, a tale of dubious pasts and things that should never have happened. That tale will be coming soon too. But first, the exciting news. While I'm doing this, I'm going to scoop this in. Now, Alien Jim who you may have heard of, this is his map, um, you've also heard the fact that I know him, um, and we get on very, very well. We come to you today in a collaboration, um, an idea, a concept, a competition. You may have gathered that from the thumbnail already. I hope Jim didn't mind me using the picture I used for the thumbnail. Um, and here's the thing, Jim wants to run a competition. He wants my help to do that, I mention it in my videos but also he wants to help me judge the competition and here's what it is and it's brilliant I love it um, Jim does like obviously map making Jim does like doing like li little mini farms on the side in placeable areas or fields or things like that um, so when you get a map with farms on it already Jim likes to go and tinker away using placeables from the mod hub and making his own little farmstead to one side that you can use to do whatever you want with which is all very, very nice. What Jim has decided to do is run a competition whereby you can set up your own little mini farm using placeables from the mod hub. This is open to console players and PC players. The only stipulation being that PC gamers have to use mods that are in the mod hub. They can't use any mods from anywhere because that kind of makes it unfair on console players who can only access certain ones. And what you want you to do is set up your little mini farm, whatever it might be. It could be a, a kind of sawmill type setup, anything you like, basically. A setup of some description. I don't think it has to specifically be in a placeable area. It can be anywhere you want on your map, on your farm. And send your pictures to his Facebook page of your creations, of your mini farms, of your placeable areas. Now, I will put the link for his Facebook page in the description so you can get it from there. So you'll post them and he and I will have a look at them. Uh, we'll go, go through them and we'll shortlist them and we'll try to pick the ones that we like. There are going to be various different criteria I would imagine for us to think about. Kind of originality and uh, use of placeables and what it looks like a natural feel I mean there's going to be all different things I suppose Jim and I are going to come at it from different angles him from a more map creator's perspective and me from kind of I mean he games he does play the game but you know um, and here's the prize and the prize is the awesome bit the bit that I think is just brilliant it's not a game it's not we're not going to send you a pass for anything or anything like that Jim has said whoever wins will be immortalised on a map forever he will use your name and you will have a farm I assume this may be negotiable a farm, maybe a cell point, I don't know, maybe a farm with a cell point named after you as I have been lucky enough to have been on two of his maps now with Silly P Farm and then obviously Silly P Brewery which is now the Silly P cell point on here Silly G, my daughter, has been lucky enough to have hers on here with the Silly G Bakery he will immortalise you in a map forever. You will be named, it will be your farm, or something else possibly. It depends what, what sort of arrangement you come to. That's the, the competition, that's the prize. Get on there, get making, use those placeables, be creative, be inventive, do something different. 
um, set them up, take a picture, sling it over onto Jim's Facebook page. I don't know what the uh, kind of end date will be on this. That will follow. I suppose Jim and I will have a bit of a discussion. And I will mention it on one of my videos. Keep watching my videos and then you'll know. Um, I would do the whole, if you want to be entered into this competition, you have to hit like and leave a comment in, in my... You don't have to do any of that. It would be nice if you did. Slam that like button. Um, and you're more than welcome to leave comments you always are but that's the competition get busy, get going, get your pictures onto Jim's Facebook page of your little mini farms your placeable areas, whatever you decide to do using only placeables from the Mod Hub and you could be on one of Jim's maps his next map actually, not one of them his next map that he produces so there you go, exciting stuff I'm not going to enter that would be unfair. I already have my name on the couple, which is pretty awesome. And what I'm more impressed with is the whole time I've been doing that, I've been chatting away. I've actually been managing to load this uh, this manure, which has worked out right. This is going to go down to the dock for Farm McKinnon. I will be receiving 25 sheep at some point. I think I've got to take a couple of loads down. Uh, he needs a fair old bit on Harkinstead, which is great. Um, I've got a couple of other subscriber contracts in the pipeline which I'll be mentioning in further videos as they come up. I have got um, the T8 working away with the Jimper Plough on field 11 I think it is. Hang on. Yes it is field 11. Um, which is brilliant. And then I'm going to be doing slurring or potentially muck spreading. I still need to buy a seeder because I don't have that either. But I just thought I'd get this job done first. Then we'll get over to uh, Mr. Selican's house and try and fix his roof. I thought this had a high tip function, but this might not be... I seem to be struggling to fill this. We'll get there. 59,000 litres. And that can go down to the docks. So, yeah, there we go. Now, a tale of intrigue. I promised you that too. And here goes. It's quite a sad affair, really. It turns out that uh, Farmer Adrian, up at uh, Plumpton Farm, has ancestors as well. He is a descendant of farmers. Um, and his great uncle, his great uncle Albert, was very good friends with my great uncle Henry here at Sussex Farm. Very good friends indeed. They used to enjoy going to the races. The racetrack down the road used to be a horse racing track called Fontwell. And they used to go to the horse races, they used to go to the pub and drink together. They were very, very good friends indeed. Now there's a little plot of land, I believe. Now that still shows us something in that, I think. But it's saying zero, so I'm not sure. Um, there was a plot of land right by Plumpton Farm that uh, Adrian's great uncle Albert had his eye on for some time. And, well, what happened in the end was a bit underhand and a bit devious. They had a bet on a horse race to sweeten the pot, to make it a bit more enjoyable a bet. It was suggested that my great-uncle Henry put in this plot of land as a sweetener for the, for the whole kind of bet. But what Adrian's great-uncle Albert had done had rigged it. He'd switch betting slips, knowing that he would win, knowing that he would get the land, and he did, unbeknownst to my great uncle Henry. My great uncle Henry never told anybody what had happened. The land just kind of got passed over. But what has happened recently is that Adrian found the deed. He had no idea about any of this story. He found the deed, couldn't understand what was going on, did a bit of digging, and that's what he found out. He has come to me to apologise profusely for his great uncle Albert and his misdeeds his sneaky deviousness I won't go on too much Adrian that's not fair um, but Adrian has come to me and apologised profusely and he wants to make amends he wants to make it right whoa I need to pay attention to where I'm driving while I'm talking um, he wants to make it right now the plot of land is where the scrapyard now sits but I'm allowed to use the scrapyard and various different things whenever I want to I can come and sort out silage and silage bales whenever I want to that's part of the kind of making amends that he's said he will do 
Um, but what he's also said is, in a way of an apology and kind of interest on the whole situation, he's going to give me field 18, I think it is. It's the one directly outside Plumpton Farm that looks like it should be for kind of agroforestry, with rows of trees, um, with kind of grassland in between. He's going to give that to me as an apology, which I think is incredibly generous of him and incredibly nice of him. He didn't have to do that. The fact he came clean and admitted what had happened is good enough for me. I like Adrian a lot. I know him very well. So, that's what's going to happen there. At some point, a deed will pass across to me for field 18 from Adrian. So that will be mine. Which is all very lovely. So, I'm going to head on down to the dock. I'll see you down there in a minute. Um, there's also another, um, well not a subscriber contract exactly, I suppose it is technically a subscriber contract, which I will also explain. This is going to get just like Oakfield, it's going to get very complicated with all sorts going on. I hope you're enjoying the narratives and the storylines. For me it just makes the kind of gameplay a little bit more interesting. Like I've said before, if you're new to this channel, you're new to this Let's Play, um, it kind of helps me while away the hours. I've got a reason for doing something. I'm not just going up and down fields and producing tons of silage or corn or wheat or barley for no particular reason. I'm doing it for a reason because subscribers have suggested ideas um, and that's kind of how it works. The contracts aren't actually available in the game. These are ones that subscribers have given to me. So, down to the dock. See you there in a moment. Right, I'm here. I'm at Sussex Port. I've come to this jetty. Well, I suppose they call it a jetty. It's a bit, a bit big to be a jetty, isn't it? The ship to um, Spectacle Island has obviously gone. That's on its way off, considering it's what time is it? Half past, nearly half past four in the afternoon. Um, what I am doing is leaving it here. I'm going to leave the trailer here. Actually, I'm going to cover the trailer. Disconnect and leave that there. That will either be unloaded onto a ship. I don't know if it's one of these ones this side that's going to be transporting it to Argonstead. I'm not entirely sure. But I'll leave that there. That will be collected or unloaded. Then I'll be able to come back and get the trailer. Um, so that's dropped off. So that will be for Cameron. Um, and what will hopefully happen is, at some point, the trailer will appear with 25 sheep in it. I might need to do a couple more loads before I get to that point. Anyway... What I'm going to do now is head out towards um, what used to be Silly Pea Brewery, which is the Silly Pea Cell Point. Now, opposite that, when I kind of arrived here, in that area opposite, there's the man cave, and there's also a Maltings. Uh, that Maltings is owned. That's not owned by me. I assumed it was part of the Silly Pea Brewery. It isn't. That's owned by Milson's. Um, I want to double check that because I'm pretty sure it was Milson's. I think it's Milson's Maltings, which is pretty cool. Um, they own it. Um, if it's not Milson's, I apologise massively. It will come up on the screen. I think it is. I've got, I've got so many names buzzing around my head with various different contracts. Um, and they are after 500,000 litres of barley. That doesn't have to be over one season. That may mean me investing in another field, a bigger field, maybe. Because I don't think I'm going to even come close to that this season. Um, and for that, I will get... Um, obviously, that will help out with the brewery, with malt. £375,000 worth of equipment. Or I imagine, maybe that will pay for the field. Maybe I could do a bit of a kind of... bit of backwards kind of shuffling and see if I can get an advance by the field to do the work so yeah this is this is Milton's Maltings this isn't this isn't mine so uh, yeah that's what they want 500,000 litres I need to work towards that at least this year so there's going to be a lot of barley being put in the ground this year which is fine by me um, so yeah that's again another subscriber contract on the cards now I need to pop over to Mr. Seligan's house check out this roof I might grab one of the tractors for doing that though so, again, I do think... Oh, who was it as well? I was asked for... Was it Scooter? It might have been Scooter. I was asked for so a selection of delicious cakes and pastries and breads and things from Silly EG Bakery. 
that I'm going to have to sort out how I'm going to do that and that will probably be delivered to the docks as well for transport overseas again I'm not sure how much that we need to work out but I think that was for scooter yeah so like I say loads loads going on loads in my head um, things I'm trying to work out plus I need to supply water to the car wash for Dan's car wash which I'll do at some point all of these things are not going to happen in one episode they're going to happen sporadically across different episodes I might fit in some water for the car wash in one I might do some more manure for Far McKinnon in another um, you know all of these things are being going to be ongoing projects fuel for the airfield the airport as you found out from yes less said about that the better every maybe few days I'll be able to do a load up there um, I have seen a few people have left little things showing me how they do theirs and it's actually fascinating multiple tankers all unloading at the same time into the sell point so the price doesn't drop that's a clever way of doing it I like that in a lot um, and I'm going to meet up with Adrian later on Farmer Adrian at the pub here at McConnell's it's McConnell's isn't it um, for a pint just to kind of bury the hatchet so to speak so across the fields over to the farm grab a tractor and let's get this tree sorted out for Mr Selican I've done enough talking for a little while I think just been up the steep rocky hill round behind the sawmill I'm heading round behind the store and the airport out onto the main road um, Jim has told me in the update I think there's going to be a secondary wool cell point down the docks as well to give a bit of variety and I think that rocky uh, that rocky road <coughs> not ice cream or anything <laughs> but down the back there that runs down behind towards sawmill that's been smoothed out a lot I think he said in his update and he has assured me as well that as far as he is aware there should be no need for a new save game as far as he's aware So, turn left down here. Too steep. Oh, now is this the field that everyone's been saying? Is there another way into field 31? Is this field 31 here? Yeah, I've had quite a few people ask me, is there another way into field 31? I'm not sure where the way into field 31 is. Is it over by Abbott Farm? Abbott's Farm? Maybe. Um, and all honestly, I don't know. I'm assuming it's down here somewhere. Is it really narrow? Oh, okay, here. Oh, right, that would be why people are asking. I assume then for big machinery, considering it's quite a big field, People are struggling to get in with big enough machinery to do any work in here. That would make sense. Okay. I did wonder why people were asking me. So, chuck right here. Up the hill. Mr. Selican's house should be just up here. His relatives live in Belgium. And they got in touch with me and they asked if they would mind, if they would, if they minded, if I minded helping out. Which of course I don't. So, there's gold on his roof as well, that's probably not going to help. Nice little place to live, isn't it? Tucked away in the forest, lovely. So, that's your problem right there. Now, I should be roped on for this, but... Let's go and have a quick look, shall we? Doesn't appear to be any damage. No tiles loose. That I can see. Well, that's swaying. Okay. Well, no structural damage that I can see, which is good news. 
for Mr. Selican anyway, not for me. If I slip off this roof, that's gonna be incredibly bad news. Um now what's the best way I can do this? You know what I do. Not the Wopster, that's not gonna help. Let's see if I can chop a bit off this end. If I take it down from this end. Shouldn't that just fell off the roof? I may have just caused some structural damage. Did I just drop those both through the roof? Right. Should never do this. Cut through something while you're on it. That's a ridiculous thing. I don't think so. Let me use it. Um, no, right. I'm going to cut it down from this end. Let's cut it down from here. I think this side will be better. Took that a little bit. Is it let me come it? There we go. Right. Didn't seem to help a lot. Let's chop this bit here. Okay, we might fall off. Come on. No, it's just what waste again. Great. <clears throat> like I say, I'm probably causing more damage here. The, the tree's just now sliding down the roof, cracking and smashing tiles as it goes. I apologise now for an awful amount of doing this. Come back later with a small trailer, sling it all in, take it to the wood chipper, and then we can get rid of it all. But for the time being, I might as well always leave it here. Maybe Mr. Selican can chop it up, or I could chop it up, and we can use it for firewood. I'm assuming, of course, he's got a, a wood burning stove. It's made up a little bit easier.
if Mr. Sadikin wants, I can always come, mm. chop some of that up for him, and we can put it inside. But that's done. Roof's cleared. <clears throat> I may have put a little bit through the window at some point. <clears throat> but I can come back and fix that too. That's not a problem. I'm a very amenable kind of guy. But we're done. Another job ticked off the list. I can get in touch with his family and tell them not to worry. Everything is sorted. Right. Back to the ploughing situation. Um, I need to start slurring fields. So, um, having sorted out my issues, I didn't think I had any issues with Adrian, but I think the whole deed thing has shaken him a little bit. Um, I'm good with it. He did say he's got a slurry spreader um, up at the scrapyard, which I can use. Um, like he said, it's a bit old. Needs a bit of work, maybe. That is steep. You don't really think when you're coming down it, but up it, that's a whole different ballgame. Anyway, yes, yeah, so go and grab a slurry spreader. I've got slurry at the main farm. I need to start slurrying these fields before I either cultivate or direct drill or whatever I'm going to do. It's too early yet and the temperature's not right. Ground temperature's only 4 degrees. I need 5 degrees for barley. Um, I've been looking at some of this, the field prices and if I need to I might either have to do a water run wait till I can do another fuel run or maybe a little bit more wood chipping I think to be able to afford a field to get more barley done that's potentially what I'm going to do next but I do need a cedar so that's a priority I've gone right past turning never mind I'll see you at the farm in a minute what am I doing it's getting late and I am very conscious of the fact the sun is dipping you can see Oops, that sun was in the way. We're up at the scrapyard. Adrian's farm is just there. And it's... Oh, it's just inside here. There we go. Garant. I don't know what attachment that's got on the back of it. There is an attachment on the back of it. I'm not sure what, though. There we go. Slurry spreader. That's going to come in incredibly handy. So, what I'm going to do is hook up... Double. It's not a boom spray, is it? I'm not sure what the width on that is. <coughs> that's the field. The deed's going to pass over to me. That's field 18, I believe. And that's what I was talking about. The rows of trees is perfect for agroforestry that you can run a strip down the middle that you can plough out. And then with the right width cultivator, cedar, whatever, you can run crops down the middle. That's more like agroforestry than what I did on the Valley of the Old Farm, where I just wound in amongst all the forest that was there already. This is more kind of laid out and set up for that. I think I might do that, you know. It means doing the work yourself, because obviously, with all these trees here, I don't think you were going to be able to run up there without it uh, having a few issues. It will keep stopping, I think. Anyway, must stop chatting and get back to the farm. We can't. And I have to say, the whole situation, um, I don't want to keep harping on about it, uh, with Adrian and the deed and all the you know, things passed and all that, um, he helps me out, he's helping me out, he lent me his, his um, Tatra Turno for getting the bales off the field, he's letting me use this, he, you know, I don't. he doesn't owe me anything. Um, talking of bales off the field I may have made a, an error and only a small one I was asked the question the other day when I did the, the episode where I got the bales off the field and put them in the barn somebody said to me did you use the um, the Arcusin auto stack for the bales so I said quite honestly no I didn't that episode where I got all the bales off the field and bought them here you saw me picking them all up with the bale uh, forks, the Kotec forks. You saw me putting them into here. I mean, they're not tidy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, that's not, they're not, no, that's not tidy. Um, 
but what I think the person meant was the ones that were on the field already were in very neat stacks did you use the Arcusian auto stack for those stacks my answer to that is I came to this farm and those were already in the field that's what I'm going to say that's all I need to say so I think I can fill up from the tank can't I Please tell me to up from the tanker. Yep. Okay. We're filling up from the tanker. That's good. Well, that's filling up. Actually, no, I'll wait for it to fill up. Um, so, while that's filling up, um, I'll go and check the egg situation. There might be some more eggs. So, the cat's gone. No, they're still there, still watching. Watching for that one weak chicken. They can just pounce on while no one's looking. Okay, 20,000 litres. Right. This I'm going to take down here to field 6, I think it is. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get my head around the field numbers. I'm not quite as au fait with them as I should be, really. Um, then we'll go over to field 11, because the ploughing has stopped on field 11. Um, and I was, I was thinking of extending that field anyway, so I might need to go over and do something. I don't know how wide the spread is on this. I really can't remember. How terrible is that? Um... If I put it about there, is that going to be too much? Let's see, shall we? I couldn't remember how to use this. It's saying high worker. If I press high worker, nothing's happening. But if I go L1, it says lower Moe. Oh, it's a Moesh Duo distributor. Distributor. That starts to spray. Okay. If I hire a worker now, will it work? It will. That's weird. Okay, well that's now work hide. That's got quite a wide spray on that. But I don't know how long it's going to last, not particularly much, but buying slurry is not expensive. I can whiz back down with the tanker and get some more. That'll be the first load slurried. I can always go and get some on oh, go and get some manure. I haven't got a muck spray, have I? That's slightly worrying, but that's still spraying whilst it's turning round. That hasn't turned off. Whoa, I'm wasting a lot. intervention here. Yeah. That's why is that still showing as spraying? Because it's still lowered. That's very odd. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, let's swing around to about there. I'll do this myself actually. To be fair, the size fields I've got at the moment. It's not going to take me too long to get through this. Um, field 26 is the biggest one I've got, I think, isn't it? Why well, do you got field 34 as well down by um, Abbott's Farm? I keep forgetting about that one. Right. Raise it. Ooh, nice strip. Hopefully it'll reach. Perfect. Will I run out, or will I make it to the end? Please don't run out. So how are your ideas going for your 
your mini farm placeable setups. You racking your brains yet? Thinking what you're going to do? Okay. Well, at least that's that one done. So what I'll do, I'm going to go and refill this, take this over to field 11, check on the ploughing situation. So we're getting on. The sun's going to be going down. Hopefully tomorrow, when the sun comes up, it'll be a bit warmer. I can get some barley in the ground. Oh, I've got my beacons on still. Don't need them Right, we're over here at field 11. I've ploughed the field that's here, but there's a grass field there which has got a kind of edge to it. And I'm wondering whether or not, bearing in mind how much I need to uh, to grow, whether or not I could expand this. My first thought was, what I could do is automatically pack this up here. If I do L1 and triangle, it allows great fields, I think. Drop that down. And as you can see, I'm now ploughing. So if I come back a little bit, I can get a bit more of an edge there. And some of a funny edge, but never mind. If I go down the side here, I can extend this, which is fair enough. Making my field a little bit wider, which is always going to be very handy. Um, and what I might do is, I'm not going to keep it particularly rectangular. What? Rectangular? I don't know what that was about. Rectangular? It's not funny accent day or anything like that. Um, and what I can do is come off the end, I might sweep it around a little bit from this end as well. But, kind of bring it up to join it. Up here. Now I can make this a much neater kind of cut, that's not a problem, I can change that as, as I need to. From there to there. If I press uh, L1 triangle again, just lift that up. And if I stick that on higher worker, that should now start ploughing that grass field. Which it will do, brilliant. So what I can do then, is extend these to make these both one field. I'll probably go more diagonally across to give myself a different edge to that. And at the bottom corner over there, I'll, I'll kind of blend it in a little bit neater. But that's making this field much, much, much bigger. Like I say, if I need 500,000 litres of barley for the Maltons, that's going to work. This is a much bigger field. And there's plenty of grass area. There's loads of grass for me to cut. There are loads of other grass fields. There's loads of grass around fields. Um, it's not going to hamper me too much losing out on this one. I just wanted to prove the point now that if I can hire a worker, that will plough all that out. So what I'm thinking is from here, well, I could realistically come right out, couldn't I? From here, just go straight across maybe. That give me enough room to, for my vehicles to turn? Probably not. Let's drop that down. The lid's just about right. Right there, maybe. Let will just go the whole hog and say, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. Make it a big one. So 
so about there. Lift that up. Come back to this corner. I might have gone too far. I'm sure, will be fine. Anyway, you see what I'm kind of getting at. I'm going to extend this field, I think, before I um, put any slurry in it. So, let's drop that down. And forward from there. Is that right on the edge? Pretty much. Come straight forward. at the corner about there doesn't need to be a tidy edge fields don't all have perfectly straight edges right I'm going to continue with this before it gets dark if I can get the fields prepared and at least slurry spread before um, the temperature's right then I'm ready to go with seeding that's what I'm thinking in my head excellent I need to check the animals as well before it gets dark for feed and stuff before bedtime So, with the T8 now ploughing away, you can see I've got a bit of bend in there just to join this field into the second field. I've ploughed the gap in between and I've ploughed this end. Uh, let's take a work on that. Lights on. We have come to the end of another episode. I've done a few jobs, taken the mule down to the dock for Farmer Kinnan, sorted the tree out. Uh, slurry spread the field, started ploughing here few bits done. Um, so, actually I think I'll finish up myself. There we go. Um, but we have come to the end of another episode. Don't forget the competition for Jim. Get those pictures onto his Facebook page. Like I said, there will be a link in the description for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, and I urge you to share this video, let as many people know about the competition as possible. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.